Hello and welcome everyone. In today's general review, we will look at this important paper which is the personalized hemodynamic resuscitation targeting by capillary refill time in early septic shock. This is the Andromeda Shock 2 RCT. This was published in JAMA recently. The background is that in optimal early septic shock resuscitation remains uncertain. Though we had this positive trial around 25 years back, that is the early goal directed therapy, but since then a lot of trials have shown that it's not really the final answer to our problem of managing early septic shock. And there is a heterogeneity which limits non-personalized strategy. We can't have a strategy that fits all. So we have to be more individualized. So recent trials like high MAP, low MAP, liberal and restrictive fluid have clearly shown there is no clear cut benefit of these type of uh, guidelines which one size fit all type of picture. So the new approach is to focus on restoring the tissue perfusion rather than chasing a number. This is very important. We must focus on individual patients tissue perfusion rather than focusing on some random target like a 65 map or a lactate of a particular number something like that. So the capillary refill time as a bedside target was used here. The capillary refill time evolution reflects resuscitation progress. The prior Andromeda shock 1 had shown that CRT targeting improved organ dysfunction recovery versus lactate targeting. Now this trial adds personalized hemodynamic resuscitation that means they are doing something extra for this patient on based on the capillary refill time and its response. So this has been added into this to look at how it works. So the hypothesis was that a personalized CRT targeted resuscitation algorithm improves a hierarchical composite that is death, the duration of vital support and the length of stay vis-a-vis -vis the usual care. So what are the study objectives? The primary objective was to compare CRT that is the intervention group versus usual care on a 28 day hierarchical composite using stratified wind ratio approach. Evaluate the 28 day mortality, the organ support free days, the hospital length of stay, the feasibility and the study also, safety also. Uh, regarding the design, it was a pretty global trial with 86 centers across 19 countries. Now that is spanning Americas, the Europe and Asia. The randomization was 1 is to 1 and it was stratified by the median Apache 2. And early enrollment that is within 4 hours of meeting the septic shock criteria was used. It was a multicentric, randomized, unblinded clinical trial with intention to treat analysis. What was the patient characteristics? Adults with suspected or confirmed infection lactate more than 2, uh, NORAD for MAP more than 65 after more than 1 liter of fluid, all within 4 hours. This was the inclusion criteria. So they had around 1467 patients. 720 in the intervention, 747 in the usual care. The median age was 66, which was normal across the groups. The median Apache was 18 to 19, so it was a pretty sick population. Abnormal CRT at baseline was in around 62%, that is the CRT more than 3 seconds was used over here. Regarding the intervention, the target CRT normalization, that is to reduce it to less than 3 over 6 hour period, that was the target. Identify hemodynamic patterns, that is use pulse pressure, diastolic arterial pressure and basic baseline uh, echo to identify hypovolemia, vasoplegia or cardiac dysfunction. Now fluid responsiveness assessment, this is systematic testing before any bolus was given. Acute testing protocol, two one-hour tests if needed, that is higher MAP test and fixed low-dose dopamine test was given in these patient groups. 
So what was the standardized CRT technique? Firm pressure on the distal phalanx for 10 seconds. And if it was more than 3 seconds, it was considered as abnormal. Regarding the algorithm, the tier 1, this was the initial part of the resuscitation. How did they identify hypovolemia? That is the pulse pressure was less than 40. If positive, then they gave a fluid bolus which was maximum 1 liters. Then you had vasoplegia pattern which was pulse pressure more than 40 with diastolic less than 80. So in these cases, they increased the NORAD for a diastolic more than 50. Next is the tier 2 that is if the tier 1 fails, then you look for cardiac dysfunction. Here you do a basic echo and treat the findings. Next is a MAP test. You raise the MAP to 80 to 85 for 1 hour in chronic hypertensives only. And next is the dobutamine test where you start with a 5 mics per kg per minute for 1 hour and then see how it changes. The stop rule is de-escalate when the CRT normalizes or if no physiologic benefits are seen. So while doing all these things, you keep on checking your CRT and see if there is any improvement in my CRT. If I am not finding any improvement, I will stop. So what were the outcomes and statistical plan? The primary outcome was this hierarchical composite at day 28, which was mortality, the duration of vital support and the hospital length of stay. The secondary outcomes was the 28 day mortality and the same things which were a breakdown and the feasibility and the safety of the study. So the, in the analysis, what they did was they stratified the win ratio, stratified by the median Apache 2, gatekeeping controls for type 1 error. So, so what was the primary outcome, the results, the win ratio was 1 is to 1.6. So the chances that you will win with the uh, intervention strategy was higher compared to the usual care. And this was statistically significant. If you compare pairwise the comparison, so you had more wins with the CRT strategy and shorter duration of vital support in this particular group. Regarding the secondary outcomes and the process measures, the mortality was 26% with CRT while in usual care it was 26.6. So in terms of mortality it was not much different. Organ support free was 1.28. And in the 6 hour window period process measures, here you can see uh, the CRT, the CRT normalization was seen here in 85% cases. Resuscitation fluid was more with usual care compared to the uh, intervention group and dobutamine was slightly more with the uh, intervention group. So CRT achieved lesser fluid administration, lower lactates and lower CVP which were the main reasons for the improvement that we had seen. Though there were some protocol deviation around 15% cases had protocol deviations, 6% had protocol violations and tier 1 success was seen in 65% of the cases. Then regarding the CRT group, standardized protocol with early CRT assessment, fluid responsiveness stretching and eco was needed. And in usual care, fluid responsiveness testing and eco were allowed, but they were not mandated. So how do we interpret this? A personalized CRT targeted resuscitation reduced the time on organ support without increasing adverse events. Likely mechanism is that the faster correction of the tissue hypoperfusion because we are constantly monitoring the capillary refill and the avoidance of over resuscitation. Because we are consistently monitoring and stopping the interventions once the target was achieved, probably this could have been the reasons for getting better outcomes. Regarding comparison with other trials, the Andromeda 1, the CRT target strategy had improved outcomes versus lactate targeting. Andromeda Shock 2 added physiological personalization, like as we have seen. 
So the key difference is, is that leverages bedside phenotypes versus neutral trials focusing on fixed targets. It differs from the neutral lip liberal versus restra restrictive strategy, high versus no map. It is very personal. So in this personalized, some people may get more fluid, but because they actually needed it. So this is where actually the study scores over the prior trials. So the strength is that it is extremely large and quite international and generalizable. There is a clear aud auditable algorithm. Or a a algorithm that was followed was very, very clear. There is high protocol adherence and standardized training can be given also. So there is a meaningful composite endpoint. The study endpoints are meaningful. They are actually valuable and there is something which we actually follow in our practice. The limitations being that it is unblinded. There are, can be interrater variability in terms of CRT. It cannot be standardized and threshold validation is important because the cutoffs they have used may not be valid for all patients. Again, something was used which was generalized. So these things could be personalized also. Regarding implementation barrier, the workload and training needs uh, more patients to learn, uh, sorry, the uh, caregivers to learn these strategies. So there is an implementation barrier because it's a completely different from what we are practicing right now. In early septic shock, giving this particular intervention improved 20 day hierarchical composite mainly by shortening the duration of vital support. Mortality though was similar. The clinical implication being that structured CRT guided personalization can shift organ support trajectories without giving excess fluid. So main things that we are looking over here is the proper usage of fluids, the proper usage of ionotropes. Finally, clinical application, hourly assess fix, uh, this uh, CRT, embed the type 1 tier, do these various steps in the non-responder, do the focused examination and document your progress. So, uh, how will you like to implement this in your setup? Can you implement in your emergency and your ICUs? Which subgroups most likely are likely to benefit from this? Or is there some group, subgroup which you may find some harm?